Inside of QuickBooks, there's another format that can be used to import list data only into QuickBooks. This is called Import from Excel. So if I go into File, down to Utilities, Import, and I choose Excel Files, I'm going to go ahead and say don't display this and say no. It's just saying, are you sure you want to do it this way instead of the next way we're going to show you? All right. And I'm going to go ahead and select the customer template. And here I want to go ahead and say, again, don't display this, saying, do you want to continue with this import? I want to say yes. All right. And then it's going to pop up and show me the format that we can use to import customers in Excel in this way. So right away, you can see that there is a, let me go ahead and make this a little smaller, unfortunately, because this you know, top area is kind of locked down. Uh, Right away you can see that there are very few data fields available when you import this way. It gives us some data available on the address tab. So we have the company name, first name, last name, display as, um, street, city, state, zip, all in three different fields, right? So that could be helpful. Uh, phone number, fax number, alternate phone number, uh, email address, and what's their account. So fewer fields, much fewer fields, all right? I'm going to go ahead and set up, well, well we see the customer here. Um, when I come in and I set up a customer to enter, so let's say I'm going to do uh, FL2, and I'm not going to enter any information here, but I'm going to display as um, here, and let's say we're going to make it a job. So if I have FL2 colon job 4, Right, that's a format we kind of think of there. So it doesn't like that. So we're not allowed to import jobs in this um, fashion. So we can't import them here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, so no colon job. Um, again, street address, etc. So one of the ways that this is kind of helpful is that it does give you an error report ahead of time. I'm going to go ahead and close out of customer for now and you know it, it says do you want to save your and add your data now I'm going to say I'm going to add it later so not save it yet and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back in and do vendors so import from Excel files I'm going to do a vendor it pops up what vendor data we have available and again I'm going to make it a little smaller <laughs> so we can see okay so I'm going to put in the uh, company name is going to be vendor and it's going to say, you know, again, Joe Adams, let's say this time, street, 123 ABC Street, city, Austin, state, Texas, 12345. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the phone number, fax, alternate, oops, 333. Uh, x at test.com and the account number one two three four five six okay I'm gonna go ahead and add my data now so you can see what it looks like so again this looks like a very simple way to get information in QuickBooks save and add my data now okay so I'm just gonna save it to my documents there and it goes through the process and it's gonna pop Sometimes it pops back and forth between the Excel spreadsheet and QuickBooks, even just for this one vendor, right? <laughs> and then one Excel record was added, so that's great. I can go in and view my vendor list. So now I'm going to go look at my vendor. Uh, when it imports the information here, so I have vendor, right? Main phone number, alternate phone number is there, right? Which was not there on the IF file. The fax number is there, the main email address did come across, but look at the address details down here. So we have, first of all, the first name, last name is in the first column, which doesn't really, or the first uh, row, so build to one, doesn't really make sense. Then we have the vendor name, then we have street, city, street name, and then we have a space before city state zip. So importing it this way, there's probably going to have to be some cleanup that we need to do in order to get this fixed. So probably not the best way to go ahead and do it. And there's the payment settings to get imported there. Um, so it's very little data. The data is kind of funky. The format's kind of funky. It did throw in that alternate phone number for us, but I don't know if that's enough for us to go ahead and do it this way. Now we do have a third option with the import from Excel in the advanced import area. 
So I go to File, Utilities, Import, Excel Files, right? And then I have my Advanced Import over here on the side. From here, I can go in and set up an import so I can browse, right? And I'm just going to browse for any Excel document. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so I grabbed a Excel document there. Then you can select a sheet, right? So if you have multiple sheets, I'm going to go ahead and select customers. Um, then we can come down here and choose a mapping. So it is important to understand the preferences here. So when there are duplicate, duplicates, right? So if there's a duplicate vendor name, keep existing data, replace existing data with import data, ask me what to do. And if there are errors, right? Import the rows with errors and leave error fields blank or do not import rows with errors. So you want to make sure you're aware of those preferences there. Coming down to the data mapping, so we can come in here and uh, create a new mapping. Okay, so as an example, if I'm importing customers this time, I can go ahead and say mapping name is customers. Select the import type. Again, you can see what types we can import. It's limited to just list items, customer, vendor, item, and account. All right, when we import there, we have the job or customer name here. So again, what we're showing is this is showing all the fields available to import into. And then essentially QuickBooks expects that you have an Excel document with columns tied to those, uh, tied to those uh, different pieces of information, the different boxes of information. So again, when we're looking at job of um, or customer name, right? So what we want to do is understand what those fields mean. So job or customer name here, we would need to make sure that it's imported in with that customer colon job if it is a customer and a job, right? Because that's how QuickBooks is going to understand the data. A lot of times if I'm using this format, there's a lot of troubleshooting that I have to do. All right, and especially because it's not, you know, it's not like you do it every day. <laughs> Even with conversions, maybe we do, you know, a conversion a week or once a month or something like that. So it's not like you do it every day. So sometimes I have to go and remind myself again, you know, what format does it want it in? Opening balance, we like to leave these blank. Don't put anything in there. Uh, company name, salutation, first name, last name. So these are all fields we're familiar with. Contact, phone number, fax number, alternate phone number, alternate contact. So we do see those in here. Email, billing address 12345, shipping 12345, so very similar. So your city state zip has to be in one cell. Customer type, terms, sales rep, the preferred send method is here, right? We didn't have that on the other, um, in the IF file. Tax code, tax item, resale number, price level, account number, credit limit. Preferred payment method is also here, so that's something we didn't see in the IF file. We did talk about how credit card numbers can be imported, so here's a way to get those credit card numbers into the system. Then we have our job status, job start date, end date, description, type, if it's inactive, and then a note. Okay, so all those fields, the majority of the fields are there. We just don't see those account settings. Those account settings, they just really don't want us to use. <laughs> all right, so let me go ahead and switch it over to vendor so we can be aware of those fields too. Name, opening balance, company citation, first name, last name, address, right? Contact, phone, fax, print on check as, vendor type, terms, credit, limit, tax ID, eligible for a 1099, is inactive, and note. So one, the way that we go about doing this, if we are going to use this format, is that we want to go in and create the columns, right, that we need to import data into in Excel, fill those columns in, and then you're essentially just choosing the columns, right, that map into the additional fields here. So notice on here, one of the fields that's not available that we don't see is our custom fields. <laughs> so uh, that was always one of the biggest limitations. A lot of times we'll use custom fields to enable us to do certain things in QuickBooks when we're doing conversions. And so the fact that we can't have custom fields on here is kind of a problem. So I'm looking at the pros and cons of paste from Excel. I'm sorry, import to Excel. Made a quick change there. The pros, uh, advanced you know, the advanced way gives you more fields to import data into, but you still need to understand, right, the format. It doesn't really give you sample data there, which is a con. Um, so you still need to understand the formats from ways like IF files, as an example. Uh, 
You can save your mappings for future use. So when we're inside of QuickBooks here, I can save that mapping once I create it one time. And then if I need to import more data, so again, we're talking about 20,000 lines, I want to do 1,000 at a time, it'll save that mapping for me. And I can reuse it. Um, it does give you a little bit of error information. It'll tell you what, what didn't import, as an example. It doesn't give you a lot of details on why or anything like that. So if you're getting a whole bunch of kickbacks, like it doesn't say it needs to be in this format or anything. Okay, so not a lot of information there. Um, the sample data, again, is not, so on the con side, sample data is not re really accessible. Um, you have to kind of test, play around and test with it. Um, simple import does give us a weird format, so we want to make sure that we are aware of and doing, you know, test importing a couple items before we start shoving a thousand items into our lists. And uh, it's lists only, and of course there's no undo, so if you you need to make an Excel uh, or backup, there's no undo on any kind of importing in QuickBooks, um, really, so you, you know, you need to make a backup no matter what.